Hello, Internet, and welcome to another episode of Painting with Rob. Today we will be looking at dry brushing. Dry brushing is a technique by which you use a brush that has had much of the paint removed to catch the high spots on a model with paint. This can be used to create the illusion of depth and to accent colors in order to make them pop and have more life and vibrance to them. For instance, these models have been painted green, although that is difficult to see, for their uniforms. These ones have green armor, but again, it's dull and flat. We'll also be looking at how dry brushing can be used to weather vehicles by adding damage to their uh, pristine paint job. Because here in the 41st millennium, damage happens. Dry brushing is used to catch the high points of the models, like the folds and ruffles in the fabric, or the ridges of the armor uh, on the chitin of this nid. What you're going to want is a dry brushing brush. Dry brushing brushes are different from regular brushes in that their uh, tips are flat, like this one. This is so that it doesn't get in the recesses as you're doing your dry brushing. In order for dry brushing to work properly, what you're going to want to do is make sure that your base coat is a darker color and your dry brush color is going to be a lighter color. Because most of the high points will be caught with the lighter color, it will create the illusion of shadowing in the darker recesses. Here, allow me to show you. To begin the process, put a little bit of uh, your lighter colored dry brushing paint on your paintbrush. Then take and rub most of it off. This seems counterintuitive, but what you're going to do is get so there's just a little bit of paint on there. If you'll notice here, the color slowly gets uh, lighter as it goes along. This is because you've gotten most of the paint removed from the paintbrush. If you're not satisfied with the level of paint you have on, you can always dip and try again. Once you uh, feel you have removed most of the paint from the brush, take your model and begin lightly dusting uh, the top. In order to get as much of the model as possible, make sure that you paint in a sort of star uh, pattern. Getting all of the cardinal directions, making sure to get as much of the model as possible. And again, the more you do this, the more depth you will create in the fabrics. If your brush begins gets low, reapply. Notice here there is a lot of fabric along his arm that's been ruffled because of the way his arm is. When we dry brush him, that fabric is going to show up really well. contours and lines that have been put into the model will become very obvious and apparent the more uh, dry brushing you do to it. However, if you completely cover it now uh, using your dry brushing, the depth will be lost. See? Now it looks like there's shadows and light sources on him, as well as wear to the high points of his fabric. And finally, this bloke here with the knife needs to have his clothes done. And you'll really want to just try to find any place that has contours and depth to it and kind of give it a once over. 
Also, you'll notice that I'm getting paint on some of the other surfaces. This is not a process that you can do terribly accurately, so you're going to want to do it fairly early on in the process so that you can go over any areas that you might uh, get any extra on with your other colors in order to keep them from being green. A wet dry brush will cause your paint to smudge and smear falling into the recesses of your model. So it's recommended that after cleaning out your brush between um, colors, go ahead and let it dry for a little bit so that you don't smudge and smear. For this example, we will be using dry brushing to add depth to these pieces of chitin. You'll notice it is a very flat, dark green. What we're going to do is take the high points and add light colors to it to make it look as though there is shadowing so the lower points are darker and the higher points are lighter. It will also create a nice camouflaged effect. Effect. Again, to start, get a little glob of your paint, your lighter colored paint on your brush. Then give it a little bit of a brush on your surface to get most of it off. So that again you will only be getting the high points. And for this guy, what I like to do is run it along the armor plates this way so that it will only be catching the one side. Also, go ahead and uh, what I like to do is do the ridges as well. The idea being that as the armor gets worn, it lightens up. And the newer armor is the, is the darker color. Another example of what you can use your dry brushing for is paint on a vehicle. Right now, the green paint blends into the black very easily and is very flat and matte, not very entertaining or exciting. However, in painting this, I have left marks and lines from the brush strokes. That's okay. In fact, we're going to use that, those brush strokes to gain more depth and character to the paint on the nose of this uh, vendetta. To begin, it's the same process. Dip your brush, get a little paint on it, then rub most of it off so that you have just a little bit of color coming uh, off the brush when you rub on your surface. I usually use a paper towel just for ease's sake. And then again, uh, brush it onto the surface. On large flat surfaces, it will uh, only catch the contours and um, of your paint brushing, whereas on any upper, any not flat surfaces, upraised surfaces, it will catch the high points and put more paint onto it, creating much more defined lines. Also, the bolts on the um, on the panels also catch the paint, making them lighter.
And again, on these sort of surfaces, you don't actually have to do this. I just like to do it because it adds a little bit more depth and character and uh, pop to colored surfaces, especially when you have two dark colors sitting next to each other like this.